Hi, welcome back to my channel. So I'm Sanika and for today's video, we are going to discuss Article 2 of the Revised Panel Code. So again, I'm using the same book reference, the book of Judge Abudiente and the book of Luis B. Reyes. So without further ado, so let's start our discussion slash review slash book reading of Article 2 of the Revised Panel Code. So the same as Article 1, the Article 2 is under the preliminary title of the RPC, which is the date of effectiveness and the application of the provisions of this code. So, Article 1 basically talks about the date of the effectivity of this code, while Article 2 talks about its applications or its scope. So, when are we going to use this? Who are going to use this? So, this is what Article 2 to talks about so article 2 application of its provisions so except as provided in the treaties and laws of preferential application the provisions of this code shall be enforced not only within the philippine archipelago including its atmosphere its interior waters and maritime zone but also outside of its jurisdiction against those who Number one, should commit an offense while on a Philippine ship or airship. Number two, should forge or counterfeit any coin or currency of the Philippine Islands or obligations and securities issued by the government of the Philippine Islands. Number three, should be liable for acts connected with the introduction into these islands of the obligations and securities mentioned in the preceding number. And then number four, while being public officers or employees should commit an offense in the exercise of their functions. Or number five, should commit any of the crimes against national security and the law of nations defined in title one of book two of this code so article two emphasizes that the jurisdiction of the revised panel code does not only limit inside the philippine territory or inside the philippine archipelago but it also has a jurisdiction outside of its territory which is mentioned uh which is mentioned on the five paragraphs of this article. So we will discuss each of those paragraphs and we will give some examples so we, we would uh, understand it. So we would understand it more. So before we proceed in the discussion of each of the paragraphs, so it, it would be nice if we would know or we will able to understand some important important words and phrases which is mentioned in article 2 so the first one is except as provided in the treaties and laws of preferential application so basically this phrase means that while the general rule of its provision of the revised panel code shall be enforced against any person who violates any of the provision while living or sojourning in the Philippines, the exemptions, the exemptions to that rule may be provided by the treaties and laws of preferential application, like the RPUS Visiting Forces Accord, which is the military basis agreement agreement between the Republic of the Philippines and the United States of America. And the provisions of RA number 75 so that is the first phrase which is mentioned in article 2 and now let's go to its atmosphere so the sovereignty of the subjacent subjacent state and therefore its panel laws extend to all the airspace which cover its territory subject to the right of way or easement in favor of foreign aircraft so atmosphere mentioned in article 2 it simply means that the airspace of of the philippine uh our uh, philippine island or philippine territory so if we have this land so we also we also own the airspace which is within our 
our islands okay and the next one is the interior waters so the phrase interior waters includes creeks rivers lakes and bays gulfs straits coves inlets and roadsteads lying woolly within the three mile limit and the next one is the maritime zone so the state by means of treaties have fixed its land to three miles from the coastline starting from the low water mark so four streets having more than that with the space in the center outside of the Mar marine league limits is considered open sea so basically these uh, um, phrases or uh, these words such as interior waters and maritime zone we will understand it more and we will tackle it more in the constitution law in the con yeah in the uh okay so now let's proceed to the applicability of the law so we will now discuss the five uh, paragraphs so the first one it is applicable when the offender should commit an offense while on a philippine ship or airship philippine ship or airship so we need to define first what is this ship refers about so how can we say that it is a philippine ship or how can we say that it is a philippine a philippine airship okay so the ship which refers to this article is a philippine commercial ship or airship it is the registration of the vessel that determines it its nationality not the nationality of the owners so for example if the owner of that ship might be a japanese greeks koreans or americans but if it is registered in the philippines then that ship is a philippine ship okay so when a crime is committed on board a philippine ship or airship while it is in neutral territory or in the high seas the said crimes is triable in the philippines even if the perpetrator or the victim or both are foreigners so again we must we must uh note that when it it happens on a neutral territory or in the high seas but if the ship or airship is within the territory of another country when the crime was committed then it is subject to the law of that country which now has the jur the jurisdiction over it so in other words the crime will be tried in the country where the ship was situated at the time of the commission of the crime thus if a crime is committed 10 miles from the shores of the philippines on board a vessel belonging to a filipino but the same time is not registered or licensed in accordance with the laws of the philippines so paragraph number one of article two is not applicable so let's take the case of u.s versus bull as an example so the philippine court to cognizance and assume jurisdiction over an offense committed on board a foreign vessel while it was still in the high seas but the offense continued until the ship docked to its port of destination which was in manila and now let's have another illustration so that we can further understand what uh what this paragraph one is all about and its ap applicability so so illustration so illustration number one so while a philippine commercial ship was docked in singapore a so letter a a as an apple okay a a filipino citizen killed b a malaysian national while they were on board the sh the said ship where should the case be filed and tried and tried so so the answer is in singapore since the crime was committed within the jurisdiction of the singapore can a can a's lawyer validly argue that 
A should be tried in the Philippines in accordance with the provisions of Article 2, Paragraph 1, written wherein penal laws will be given extraterritorial application if the crime was committed while on a Philippine ship or airship? So, answer is no, because the said provision applies only when the Philippine ship or airship is within the inter international waters or high seas, or neutral territories, and not when it is within the jurisdiction of another country. So, once a commercial ship or airship is within a territory of another country, again, it is subject to the laws of of that country so if it is a philippine so if it is a philippine warplane or warship it is always considered as an extension of the philippine territory even if it is within the territory of another country such that crimes committed on board a philippine warplane or warship are always within the Philippine panel jurisdiction. So again, uh, let's take some, another illustration for this case. So illustration number two. So supposing that in the preceding problems, so the problem, so yeah, the problem that I gave a while ago. So both A and B were on board a Philippine warship where will you try the case so the answer is the philippine panel laws shall be given extraterritorial application and the case shall be tried here in the philippines since a philippine warship or a warplane is always considered a part of a philippine territory wherever it may be situated subject to the jurisdiction of courts in criminal cases as provided for under BP 129, all courts of the same level in the Philippines have concurrent original jurisdiction, but court where the case will be ultimately filed acquires exclusive jurisdiction. So, in so far as foreign vessels are concerned, there are actually two rules. So, the first one is the English rule and the second one is the French rule. So, under the English rule, the offender shall be tried in the country where the foreign merchant vessel is found. So, it refers to a rule of criminal law which states that crimes committed aboard foreign merchant vessels while in a territorial waters of another country are triable in the courts of the foreign country. However, if the crime committed affects only the management of the vessels or it does not affect the safety and security of the state, then it shall be the country of origin of the merchant vessel which has jurisdiction. So under the French rule, Crimes committed on board a foreign merchant vessel while within the jurisdiction of another country are not triable in that country. The exception is when the crime committed affects the peace and security of the said country. So, actually the Philippine adopts English rule as held by the Supreme Court in the case of People vs. Watching. So we have one question here. So do the Philippine courts have jurisdiction over the crime of homicide committed on board a foreign merchant vessel by a member of the crew against another? So these orders which disturb only the peace of the ship or those on board are to be dealt with exclusively by the sovereignty of the home of the ship but those which disturb the public peace may be suppressed and if need be the offenders punished by the proper authorities of the local local jurisdiction so now let's talk about crimes not involving a breach of public order committed on board a foreign merchant vessel in transit not triable by our courts. So a mere possession of opium 
opium. Opium is a drugs, you know, it's illegal in the Philippines. So, mere possession of opium aboard a foreign merchant vessel in transit is not triable in the Philippine courts. Why? Because that fact alone does not constitute a breach of public order. So, the reason for this ruling is that mere possession of opium on such ship without being used in our territory does not bring about in this country those disastrous effects that our law contemplates avoiding. But said courts acquire jurisdiction when the teens of opium are landed from the vessel on Philippine soil. So landing or using opium in an often is an open violation of the laws of the Philippines. So when a foreign merchant vessel is not in transit because the Philippine is its terminal port, the person in possession of opium on board that vessel is liable because he may be held guilty of illegal importation of opium. Now let's talk about the crimes committed on board a foreign merchant ship or airship. So just as our merchant ship is an extension of our territory, foreign merchant ship is considered an extension of the territory of the country to which it belongs. For this reason, an offense committed on the high seas on board a foreign merchant vessel is not triable by our courts. Paulit ulit, paulit ulit na situation. Next one is continuing offense on board a foreign vessel. So, but a continuing crime committed on board a Norwegian, Norwegian, Norwegian. Hi, I don't know how to pronounce it. Okay, Norwegian merchant vessel say. Sailing from Formosa to the Philippines so by failing to provide stalls for animals in transit in violation of Act Number no. 55 is triable in the Philippines. So the offense of failing to provide suitable means for securing animals while transporting them on a foreign ship from a foreign port to a to a port of the Philippines is within the jurisdiction of the courts of the Philippines. When the forbidden condition existed during the time the ship was within territorial waters, regardless of the fact that the same conditions exist existed when the ship sailed from the foreign port and while it was on the high seas. So now let's talk about the Philippine courts which has no jurisdiction over offenses committed on board foreign warships in territorial waters. So in case vessels are in ports or territorial waters of a foreign country, a distinction must be made between merchant ships and warships. So this is what I'm talking about a while ago. So the former are more or less subjected to the territorial laws. So the former which means the merchant ship while the warships are always repudiated repudiated to be the territory of the country to which they belong and cannot be subjected to the laws of another state so a united states army transport is considered a warship so so a warship of other uh, so other countries warship is also considered as their uh, extension as the ex extension of their territory the same as our philippine warship so so much for paragraph one so we must proceed now to paragraph two okay so paragraph two stay uh i mean <laughs> sorry so the applicability of the revised uh, penal code is also applicable when the offender should forge or counterfeit any coin or currency note of the Philippines or obligations and securities issued by the governments. So do I need to explain it? So I think this is already self-explanatory. So, so anyone who forge or counterfeit our coins should be triable in the Philippines. So that's all. That's the meaning of that paragraph. No more further discussion, girl. 
it's self-explanatory. So, so that's it for that paragraph, okay? So, again, so, any person who makes false or counterfeit coins, this is uh, Article 163, or forges treasury or banknotes or other obligations and securities, Article 166, in a foreign country may be prosecuted before our courts for violation of Article 163 or Article 166 of the Revised Penal Code. So again, there is no more discussion in this paragraph. It is self-explanatory. So when you forge our Philippine coins or currency and the other country, so you are still triable in our in the Philippines. Now, let's talk about the paragraph 3 of the Article 2 of the Revised Penal Code. So, the Revised Penal Code is applicable when the offender should be liable for acts connected with the introduction into the Philippines of the obligations and securities mentioned in the preceding number. So, this is, when you read this uh, paragraph, this is somehow uh, confusing. So, what does this mean actually what this preceding uh preceding number mentioned mentioned in the preceding number what does it actually mean so when i first read this paragraph i was really confused and i was like what is the meaning of this paragraph so it basically means i mean it is just related to the previous paragraph so it means that when someone introduces to another person about the about the forgery of the coins or currency of the philippines then it is triable in our uh philippine courts so this is what uh this article i mean this paragraph talks about so so the reason for this provision is that the introduction of forged or counterfeited obligations and securities into the Philippines is as dangerous as the forging or counterfeiting of the same to the economical interests of the country. So the same as on the previous paragraph. So so forgery of the philippine currency and coins securities and obligations issued by the government of the philippines so even if it is committed outside of its territory it may be tried in the philippines for the reason of public policy this is to protect its currency as well as to protect itself against efforts to undermine its economic stability so that's what I was, I was talking about the economic, no? So even the attempt to introduce into the Philippine Islands the forged or counterfeited coins, currency notes, or obligations issued by the Philippine government is a crime which may be tried in the Philippines. So this is what this paragraph talks about. Now let us proceed to paragraph 4. So, when the offender, while being a public officer or employee, should commit an offense in the exercise of his functions. So, penal laws have extraterritorial application for those crimes committed abroad by public officers and employees which are related to the exercise of their official functions. This refers to those crimes committed by public officers so so now i will um uh, read the crimes that may be committed in the exercise of public public functions so the following uh, uh, the following are direct bribery which is found in article 2 to 210 in direct bribery which is article 211 Frauds against the public treasury, Article 213. Possession of prohibited interest, Article 216. Malversation of public funds or property, Article 217. Failure to accountable officer to render accounts, Article 218. Illegal use of public funds or property, Article 220. Then failure to make delivery of public funds or property, 
Article 221 and falsification by the public officer or employee committed with abuse of his official possession, which is in Article 171. So when any of these felonies is committed abroad by any of our public officers or employee, while in the exercise of his fashion can be pro uh, prosecuted here in the Philippines. So, so if a so if the public official assigned abroad committed a common crime which is not related with the performance of his function like murder or parasite or rape or kidnapping uh, etc so the case will be tried in the country where the crime was committed and now let's talk about paragraph 5 the last paragraph of article 2 so at least uh, the revised penal code is applicable when the offender should commit any of the crimes against the national security and the law of the nation so the crimes against the national security and the laws of the nations are the following so number one is treason which is found in article 114 conspiracy and proposal to commit treason article 115 espionage article 117 inciting to war and giving motives for repressals article 118 violation of neutrality article 119 correspondence with hostile country article 120 flight to enemy's country article 121 and piracy and mutiny on the high seas article 122 so except for piracy and mutiny in the high seas and qualified piracy which are considered as crimes against humanity and treated as universal crimes and may therefore be tried and punished in the country where the pirates or mutineers are found all the rest of the crimes mentioned under title one of book two of the revised penal code may be tried only in the philippines so under the Republic Act 9372, otherwise known as the Human Security Act of 2007, the set principles of extraterritoriality is likewise provided for. Thus, the said law provides that Section 58, extraterritorial applications of this act, subject to the provision of an existing treaty of which the Philippines is a signatory and to any contrary provisions of any law of preferential application, so the provision of this act shall be applied to individual persons who commit any of the crimes defined and punished in this act within the territory terrestrial domain interior waters maritime zone and airspace of the philippines number two to individual who although physically outside the territorial limits of the philippines commit conspire or plot to commit any of the crimes defined and punished in the act inside the territorial limits of the philippines Number three, to individual persons who, although physically outside of the territorial limits of the Philippines, commit any of the said crimes on board Philippine ship or airship. Number four, to individual persons who commit any of said crimes within any embassy, consulate, or diplomatic premises belonging to or occupied by the Philippine government in an official capacity. Num and number five, Two individual persons who, although physically outside the territorial limits of the Philippines, commit said crimes against Philippine citizens or persons of Philippines descent where their citizenship or ethnicity was fac factor in the commission of the crime. And number six, the last one to individual persons who although physically outside the territorial limits of the philippines commit commit said crimes directly against the philippine government so we are already done discussing uh in details each of the paragraph of the article 2 of the revised panel code so uh by the way before this video end um uh, we will uh, discuss this last topic. So, crimes punishable in the Philippines under Article 2 are cognizable by the 
regional trial court in which the charge is filed this talk about this this talks about the where uh crimes uh should be filed so so the crimes committed outside the philippines but punishable therein under article 2 of the revised penal code shall be cognizable by the regional trial court in which the charge is first filed this is under rule 110 section 15 d the, re the revised rules of criminal procedures so so the rtc or formal formerly c CFI have original jurisdiction over all crimes and offenses committed on the high seas or beyond the jurisdiction of any country on board a ship or warship of any kind registered or licensed in the Philippines in accordance with its laws. So, so that ends my video. I, I hope you like it, although most of the time I keep reading my books because I really don't memorize uh, this and i don't know how to explain it well so i prefer reading my book but i hope uh this this can be a helpful video uh on your part so i just want to say thank you for all the viewers so don't forget to subscribe on my channel and click that bell so that you will be notified for my next video so thank you so much bye bye